from Major League Baseball, Tim Brosnan, and Hill Holiday's Dave Bolger. With, uh, with all due respect to my colleagues and all the other speakers up here, I absolutely have the best gig today because I get to sit here and talk about baseball for 20 minutes. And respect to the cousins, this is a fine looking uh, duo up here right now. Uh, Tim, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Uh, so the big theme today has been the second screen. And you guys just recently wrapped up negotiations with your broadcast partners, mm -hmm. um, re upped your deals with your, with your partners. How did the second screen experience for viewers play into your negotiations? Um, if we didn't include the second screen experience in their opportunity to purchase the content, there wasn't a deal. I mean, it was essential. Um, and not, not just the second screen experience, but the ability to take video to the second screen, because there's, there's already a second screen experience on all of our partners' networks, but the need to take what was on television over to the second and third and fourth and fifth and refrigerator screens uh, has become essential for their business. Uh, their, their consumer is telling them um, that they want their second screen experience to be the same as a television and then some. And so without their, the ability to purchase that, they weren't interested in buying television alone. Hmm. How, have, how have you seen some of the partners start to incorporate that into, the, into baseball broadcast? Um, Again, before we kind of unleashed the video, uh, it was more about chat and statistics. Um, and they would, you know, over time, take their personalities and move them to the second screen and kind of engage the fan in what was going on on the television side. Um, but again, as we've gotten video, now the second stre uh, screen experience is split. Uh, there's a lot of predictive stuff going on. Again, the same kind of chatter that, that happened before but it is supplemented in real time with the actual uh, video that, that's going on on the television set. So you mentioned chatter, and you and I were, were talking earlier over lunch. Uh, baseball seems tailor-made for uh, social integration. Um, the, the ebb and flow of the game, the, 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 the pace of the game, lends itself to a Twitter conversation. Mm -hmm. um, how much of that played into um, your negotiations with the, with the networks? Any, uh Again, uh, they, they told us it was a sine qua non. If they couldn't have a full, robust second screen experience, they couldn't, and, and, and I don't want to get too much into the business of television and cable versus the over-the-top guys, but in order for uh, this wonderful uh, ecosystem that, that works for sports to continue to survive the way it does, there had to be a full, robust second, and, I, and we keep saying second, but it's second, third, fourth, it's, it's really any pipe, any device. Mm -hmm. That's where they want to negotiate for our content. That's great. So speaking of, of Twitter and social, um, last year you guys did something pretty innovative in the, in the sports space and, and allowed mm -hmm. um, players to tweet during the All-Star game. Let's, we have a video of that, let's take a look. MLB is allowing the players to tweet from a room just off the clubhouses, and that one spins Bautista out of there, a breaking ball that stayed up and in. At the real Matt Kemp, he's the first player to ever tweet during the All-Star game because he's not in the game. There's a good tight breaking ball from Strasburg, and the count one ball, one strike. So that was Kemp. This is David Price. David, who pitched one perfect inning, is in there and experiencing the joys of social media. There's a fastball for strike two. Told you he went to Vanderbilt. He could tight two. Yeah, he's not a punt and peck guy. Uh -uh. We'll miss Tim McCarver. Uh, we will miss Tim McCarver, <laughs> but I'm not sure he was a big fan of the social media <laughs> I interaction. So. I don't think so. Uh, was that a success? For you guys? You know, I think the bigger question is, is that a success? We were talking about it before. Um, yeah, it, it, actually, let me rephrase that. Yes, it was a success. And, and by the way, it didn't start with the All-Star game last year. It started with Home Run Derby the year before. Um, and, and again, the broadcast or the cable telecast 
it's all about ratings for us. And anything we can do to boost ratings, either bring new audience or keep the other audience engaged for longer intervals, that's what we're trying to do. So um, the theory is still being tested as to whether social engagement raises ratings. Uh, we think that it does, but you know, no one's given us the living proof just yet. But what we do know uh, is that the existing fan base stays more engaged, and then uh, they're likely to um, talk to their friends about what's going on, share video about what's going on. So the theories are all there that, yeah, this is going to uh, uh, help us reach the objective that we have, which is uh, uh, get a bigger audience, period, end. Um, but sometimes I think, you know, I, I, the interesting debate I'd like to hear people have, and maybe if the Twitter folks were here, is does the video actually do better for Twitter than Twitter does for the video? Especially with big sporting events, you know? I, 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 I know Twitter brought Bluefin Labs, right, to kind of try to start to measure this stuff. And I think if they had it down pat, we'd know it already, <laughs> right? Um, so, so, again, any way, shape, or form that we can get fans to engage in video that at the same time is happening on the big screen that we're measuring the ratings for, yeah, it's a success. So is that something we can see, we'll expect to see in the future? Uh, more and more. And, and actually, you know, not just uh, uh, things related to what's on the screen, but things that we think we can generate that'll cause people to want to watch the screen. I'm, I'm assuming we're going to talk about our fan cave project that we've, we've done with our partners. And by the way, I haven't thanked Hill Holiday for having us here, for having me here. So thank you very much for having us here and for all the great work that you do for us. So there's your infomercial. We'll get back to this. <laughs> um, <laughs> that you, Karen, happen to be the greatest <laughs> advertising executive known to man. Is that the, did I get that right? Um, <laughs> That's getting tweeted all around the world right now, by okay. the way. Okay. No, no. I think that you're going to see more and more, and you're going to see more off the field because we think, you know, our players are just like uh, the rest of the populace. They're more and more engaged on the social spaces, on different media platforms, and it's a way for them to become more personalized. And at the end of the day, uh, we know what our viewers are interested in. They're interested in being inside the game, and that means knowing more about uh, the players as people, about their interests, et cetera. And the social platforms give us enormous opportunity to do that and, and then draw a viewing audience in when these guys are doing what they do best. So Michael Smith was here this, from ESPN this morning. He was here, and he mentioned uh, Kobe Bryant tweeting during a game and, and mm -hmm. the uproar that that caused, and he was against it. And Tyler Hissey, who you know, was for it, and I think they almost came to blows right here on the stage. Mm -hmm. um, how My do you, money's on Michael. Uh, <laughs> It's an easy bet. Right. Um, how do you, in, in a, control, a controlled environment like the All-Star Game, it's an mm -hmm. event that, uh, well, it's interesting, in the, in the Home Run Derby, right. it's, a, it's a, it doesn't, I mean, I don't want to say it The Home Run Derby is an exhibition. It's an exhibition, thank you. We can do you. whatever we want. But in the All-Star Game, for baseball, it counts. It's yeah. a meaningful so game, but, 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 you allow, but you still allow players to Only tweet. Only in how, a controlled environment. Only at a the, desk where we're watching. The way the All-Star Game worked is, we had people actually monitoring what was going out. Right. And that's about the competition. I mean, you know, with every sport, um, if, if you compromise the competition at all, it's over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was talking to our friends, the, the hunks from the <laughs> kitchen show, um, and, and I was saying, we're the ultimate reality television. You know, that they're in reality TV. I said, sir, are we? And, you know, the reality for us is there's a different result at the end of every show. And if we compromise the fact that, that the result is based only on the competition, pure and simple, you know, we lose our authenticity, we lose everything. Mm -hmm. So the whole social uh, 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 media really gets difficult for us. I, I, and by the way, I'd be on the side of Michael. I don't think that that there's an opportunity there just yet unless mm -hmm. it's controlled. And then if it is controlled, it's inauthentic. And if it's inauthentic, people don't really want to engage, right? right? So for us, I think the dugout and the clubhouse during the game, sometime before and sometime after, is going to have to be sacrosanct, uh, except for when we're doing exhibitions mm -hmm. like Home Run Derby. Right. So that's interesting. So there, there is a clear line. And mm -hmm. I think you mentioned the fan cave. I think with the fan cave, you found a way 
to allow fans to engage with players in a way through social media and, mm -hmm. and through some, some other channels um, that has, I think, gotten around the, the competition element that, that you mentioned. Well, the interesting thing about Fan Cave is, is it's a baseball social media platform that you rarely see a baseball highlight on. And I think that's the magic of Fan Cave is we've built, again, in, in partnership with Hill Holiday, we've built a place that has, I, I don't know the last numbers, three million, four million followers. And it's, I, I don't think you see a highlight on it. You know, most of sports social is still about someone tweeting and saying, watch this dunk, watch this catch, right. watch this touchdown. Right. Um, Fan Cave is about, you know, watch David Price, um, you know, mug up as some, watch, watch uh, Miguel Cabrera do a soap opera about Miggy Poco. Right. Um, um, so that, that opportunity you're going to see expand because the reaction of Fan Cave has been enormous and it's been from a whole a different set of folks. I mean, when we have events at the Fan Cave, you can look around and say, you know, these are people that really only watch the World Series and only if their friends tell them they have to. Uh, you know, the Fan Cave is helping us to inject cool into baseball, which, you know, is a really hard thing to do. Inject cool into anything is a really hard thing to do, but we've been managing it pretty well with Fan Cave. CNBC called it the craziest, most ambitious, yet perfect idea sports league has ever come up with. Let's take a look at the video. Very nice, very nice. Show me the money! All you're giving me is fiction. I'm not in the winters of my life or the beginning stage, I am the dragon. Miggy Poco, pensaba que estabas muerto. No, solamente me trasladaron a tercera. You're my very best friend in the world, Tom. Maybe someday we can grab a burger. Skyrockets in flight. Boo! Afternoon delight. You guys got it. Afternoon delight. So I think there you're seeing the, the San Diego Padres bullpen. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's a, it's a side of players you don't get to see very often. Well, you just did a minute and there wasn't a baseball hockey. Right, exactly. Um, what we tell people, what, when we were actually going to build out the fan cave, um, um, one of your partners, the production company, came with Paulie DeMeo from Extreme Home Makeover, Extreme Makeover or Home Edition, whatever the name of it is. And he was saying, he was laying out the fan cave, and he was like, over here, is gonna be the pitching machine. And, and I was like, wait a second. This, we're not trying to build FanFest. We're building a, a content engine for social media. And I, I came up with this phrase, it makes no sense, but I said, what we want here is Mr. Rogers' neighborhood for hipsters with baseball running through it. And <laughs> our, our guys have embraced that now, though. And, and, and again, um, the people that come to the fan cave, they don't come because it's baseball. They come because it's a hip place. Neon Trees might be playing. Goo Goo Dolls is playing tomorrow night. Nas might play. And we're just putting them in a baseball setting and kind of letting them take in the vibe and saying, oh, baseball did this for me. And, and I can tell you, to a man or a woman, they are on uh, social media the entire time. They're in fan cave because it's encouraged and it's, it, creates that vibe. So it's, um, that's the kind of stuff I think you're going to see more and more of from us. It's created a lot of exposure to baseball content, created a lot of engagement with fans. Um, what's been the impact on your business? Um, again, uh, it, we measure the fan cave audience. It's 20 years younger than our viewing audience. And I can tell you the tens or hundreds of millions of dollars we spent to get younger. I mean, in sports, um, um, we have this enormous opportunity in front of these enormous audiences, but uh, it's hard for all of us to move our audiences because they're big and they're kind of stayed. They're the same. You know, they move through and they pass it on to generations. We've not had anything uh, uh, as effective as Fan Cave to move to a younger audience on, on literally on a turn. It, you know, the, the first year we built out Fan Cave, uh, it was a raw space in the middle of February. And by the middle of March, you know, we had our first followers on Facebook and our first 
people following us on Twitter. And again, it's really only been two years effectively mm -hmm. in months. And, and you know, we have four million people uh, engaged in Fan Cave, and they're, they are a different audience than normally engaged in baseball. What can we expect to see this season and beyond? Um, I think we want to scale it. So the most effective way for us to scale it is to get the television partners more integrated. You see, the, the, and the folks at ESPN, I know Ed Earhart was, was here this morning. Um, they were the first ones out there trying to really make commercial opportunity of the social setting. So they may be a little bit ahead of the other guys in terms of selling it, but now everybody's on it. So we're engaged with all of our partners, like the All-Star Game that's in New York. There will be as much content being created all-star-wise out of the fan cave as there will be out of City Field. Hmm. Um, and then, uh, again, throughout the season, at every 10 poll that we have through our season, fan cave will be kind of its own special event. So you'll see us celebrating the traditional baseball holidays in a non-traditional way and then trying to create other fan cave tent pole. We want fan cave to kind of be in and of itself, mm -hmm. a, 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 you know, a baseball platform. So I think you'll see us building that brand, again, separate and apart from baseball highlights, but within the baseball family. Just, just because it, I think it's amazingly cool, can you talk about mission control a little bit? Um, yeah, uh, we haven't really gotten mission control down. Okay. Um, but th so one of the things we need to do with Fan Cave is bring the locales into the Fan Cave. You know, we have 30 different parks uh, where people follow baseball. And the big challenge this year, we've had a lot of clubs say, I want Fan Cave. I want to build my Fan Cave. You're like, no, you don't really want to build your Fan Cave. It takes too much work. How do we engage every park? So uh, mission control is literally uh, uh, w what we're doing is borrowing some of the technology from MLB Network, which is a standalone camera in every park. Uh, we're able to monitor every park, all 30, on a, you know, on a, on a platform. And then we're going to create, you know, think Google Chat, right? We're going to create opportunities for fans all at once to get into this wide-ranging discussion with folks who are actually sitting in the fan cave. And it might be the San Diego fan who's won the competition to come be, uh, we call them cave crashers now. So fans are going to come and live in the fan cave with our fan cave dwellers throughout the year. And, and, and again, we're trying to tie the physical space out to every ballpark. Great. Um, open to some Twitter questions? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, Matt probably doesn't want me being on Twitter, but uh, <laughs> we'll take a shot. So uh, another one from Noah. Noah's busy today. Um, is the second screen just for viewers at home? What about spectators at the game? Any thoughts about incorporating that? Oh, no. The second screen is very much for, for visitors at the game. In fact, uh, I think we're kind of leading the charge. The big issue is in the ballpark, the capacity of the stadiums to handle, particularly with the onslaught of video, right? Takes up more space than anything else. Mm. And so the, the, the problem in a lot of parks is you just don't have capacity. I mean, any big game, you can't even make a cell phone call in a lot of places. Right. And baseball's been at the forefront of trying to expand the capacity. We're working with three or four of the largest carriers to create enough bandwidth so that whatever a fan wants to do with their portable device, they can do. And the second screen is, is no integral to the ballpark experience. How, is there any, has there been thought about Fan Cave as part of the in-park experience? Well, Fan Cave is going to become more and more part of every experience. So, yeah, there is. In fact, we're taking it the other way around, though. Uh, when I talk about uh, uh, scaling Fan Cave, we're in a negotiation um, right now with several of our partners in our own network to actually start generating regular, regularly scheduled daily television shows out of the Fan Cave to give them the cool or the panache that is Fan Cave and give Fan Cave the broader everyday audience that's on the broadcast side. That's great. So I think we have time for one more. I don't know how this one got in. Is it Noah again? Uh, no, it's a guy named oh. Dave. His question is, teams always need a, a lefty... That's you. <laughs> no. Team always need lefty pitching. I have a great curveball. Can you get me a tryout? <laughs> Only after my tryout. <laughs> he didn't say no. Uh-huh. Tim Brosnan, ladies and gentlemen.
Thank you. Thank you.